our viewers. I'm Shane Rolf. And I'm Julia Rolf. And we're the Rolfs. And uh, our business is called Rolf International. We're a boutique relocation business. We help expats moving to Mauritius. We do everything from your pet relocations, your kids' schooling, getting you medical, getting you homes, and doing your permits. That's our business. So today our topic is going to be everything medical. Medical is something that comes up a lot in our consultations with our clients. And uh, Julia is going to kick it off, I think, with medical aid. Huh? Yes, so I think one of the purposes um, of these videos is to try to just bring a little bit of our own experience. We've been living here in Mauritius now for over 16 years. And so we like to just share some of our, um, our situation just to help you to feel what it's like to be here and just to be a little bit more informed about decisions if you're looking to relocate here. So we, as Shane mentioned, we get a lot of questions regarding medical and how does it work, how does it cost, how much does it cost. Um, so one of the things we can do is, is connect you with a broker who can get specific quotes for you. Our but, broker who's excellent. <laughs> very good. Yeah. And it doesn't cost you anything. He just does all the groundwork and gets all the different um, competitive quotes and you can look at that. But I thought there would be three things that I would draw out of how the medical aid works here. So the first thing is uh, pre-existing conditions. So if you have any pre-existing conditions, like most medical aids, that may be excluded from your cover, sometimes they would consider um, having that covered if you are... Um, <laughs> we've just had friends pop in the door and wave. <laughs> um, that's real life, guys. That's real life, yeah. Be rehearsed, yeah. <laughs> um, Where's my train of thought? So pre-existing conditions. So sometimes they will consider pre-existing conditions that are covered by your current medical aid and they may look at that as, as something they will cover. Otherwise, it is something that is excluded. So that's something to think about if you're switching medical aids from your uh, current medical aid and coming out here. And then the age restrictions also, aren't there age restrictions? Yes, so there are age restrictions. If you are over the age of 65, um, you the medical aid here will refuse to cover you. Um, and if you are less than one month old, yeah. um, which is very interesting, I found when we had our children, um, we weren't able to have them covered prior to their delivery. Um, so they have to be one month old, but also they there is this um, waiting period. So there is normally a three month waiting period where you cannot make a claim when you first add somebody to the, to the cover. So Which, that's like four months for babies. You really, count. yes. So if your child is born and there's sure. any um, health complications, of course, their first four months of their life is usually not covered. Sure. So this is something to think about, something to consider, especially if you're wanting to have a baby. The other thing is that if you are wanting to start a family, that usually there's a 12-month waiting period for claiming any costs that are associated with giving birth and for pregnancy. Okay, so you join up on the medical aid now and you can only have a baby after a year? If you want it to be covered, the expenses to be covered by the medical aid, yes. And okay. this is pretty standard across most of the local medical aid covers. Okay. Um, so, yeah. and, then, and then what about excesses? Like, do you pay excesses on claims? Yes, so there are three types of covers. So you'll have catastrophe cover, which is almost like a hospital plan. Um, and there you have usually set, uh, you can choose uh, your excess. So it normally starts around 25,000 rupees, then 50,000 rupees, 75,000 rupees, and of course your premium changes if your excess is higher or lower. Then you have what they call inpatient cover. And inpatient cover is if you go into, um, perhaps caesarean for example, would be considered an inpatient cover, or if you're really sick and you get admitted into hospital, that would be inpatient cover. And there it's normally no, there is no excess. If you present your medical card, they will cover the expenses. The third section of your cover is outpatient. So outpatient would be dental, going to the GP, optometrist, optometrist. and here there's normally about a percentage that's applied to the um, expense. So there's 20%, I'm talking in general, um, some medical covers may be different, but usually it's around 20% excess, which is for your account, and the rest is covered by the medical aid. Yeah, well, that's awesome. So thanks for that, Joel. Um, I learned something today. <laughs> um, so the big question for everyone is what's the medical like in, in Mauritius? So we, we have great hospitals. There's two main hospitals, one called Bramble 
and another one um, called Welcome Bramall, and the other one called Darnay. The one's in Curapip, the one is next to Bagatal in the centre of the island. Um, amazing facilities, amazing doctors, um, and we've been really happy with our experiences. Um, for the day-to-day -day things, um, like, like uh, I'll, I'll give you a bit of an example which I like to use for myself, is I might get an ear infection, and I'll phone my local GP and uh, I'll call him at 8 in the morning and he'll say to me, Shane, I can see you at 6 p.m. tonight. And I'm like, oh man, I can't wait till 6 p.m. And then I'll go down to the local government clinic here, which is a little clinic. Um, they've still got a roller deck system with my name and my card on. I tell them my name. And as a, as a resident in Mauritius, um, if you have a residence card or a residence permit, you have access to the medical facilities free of charge. Um, and I go there, they pull out my card. Um, they say, okay, the doctor's room's over just next door. I take my card. Usually there's no one in the queue. Knock on the door. He says, come in. Give him my card. He says, what's wrong? I say, my ear. I think I've got an infection. He checks my ear. He says, yes, you've got an infection. He writes me a script for an antibiotic and some drops. Um, I then walk out of the doctor's room. I go to the little counter. I ring the bell. Bing, bing. The lady comes to the counter. She gives me a, usually it's an Indian generic medicine. Um, I, I take the medicine. She gives it to me within a minute. I take my card, hand it back in the counter, and I'm in and out of the clinic within five minutes. I've got my free medication, a free doctor's consult, and I'm in and out. Phone my GP back, say, sorry, Mr. GP, I'm not coming anymore at six o'clock. I've already been sorted. Cancel my appointment. So the local government clinics are actually amazing. You need to use them for what, what you need them for. Um, our other big one is the boys. My kids, I've got two young, budding, sporting boys, and it's... Stitches here, stitches there, cut in the knee, cut under the chin, and we, we find it's easier to take them to the local government hospital to get their stitches. These guys do stitches every day um, in the local community uh, with all the kids around you, and uh, rather than driving into the center of the island, which takes you 30 minutes in traffic, uh, we pop down to the local government clinic. They actually know my boys by name, and they say, oh, here's Keenan again. Let's get it. Where does he, he need the stitches? And uh, they give him the stitches within two minutes, we're out of there. And uh, this was recommended to me by one of the, the Mauritian elders here, the old, one of the older guys I know in the trail running community. And he, he said to me, Shane, I've had five boys. All of them have had their stitches at the local clinic. And you've got to follow locals' advice. Yes. So that is an option. If you would like to just take inpatient cover for emergencies or just catastrophic cover, as they call it here, and then just go to the local public hospital for um, your daily needs if you've got colds and flus or and and, and, stitches. And sorry, but there's never queues there. There's never, you know, they're never busy. I think the busiest I've ever been in there were three people there, so. Yeah, and this is, I mean, of course, in our area, perhaps yeah. it differs from each um, hospital across the island where there's maybe a more, uh, more of a demand. So, but our experience has been that the local hospital, the government hospital is great. The people are great. Oh, it's clean. Um, it's clean. They're, they're Organized. Help, helpful. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, you're paying a tax. And, and so if you want to utilize that benefit, then, then there is that option. Okay. So in certain cases, um, if you have uh, like a really uh, complicated surgery in that. So mm -hmm. the, like the way we've set up our medical aid or well, the way our broker set up our medical aid on our behalf is that we have a international expat cover for anything over $10,000. So any claim that goes over $10,000, they cover us from $10,000 to $2 million anywhere overseas. So they'll put us on a plane, fly us to Dubai, fly us 30 minutes away to Reunion where some of the best hospitals in the world, fly us into Johannesburg, Cape Town, into Germany, into wherever they need be, pay for the flights, pay for the accommodation, make sure you get the world-class medical care. And if you even have to be medically air vac they pay for that as well. So we have our catastrophe cover or above $10,000 cover, which covers us as this international expat insurance. Um, and then we have below the $10,000 cover, which is our local Mauritian medical aid. Yeah, and, that, and one of the reasons why we did that is that a lot of the local medical aids have a, what they call like a lifetime limit. So if, if you are covered for cancer, for example, they will cover you up to a certain limit. And, and that's sort of a lifetime limit, meaning that once that limit is, is exceeded, they will no longer cover you. So we were looking for, if, if there's a long-term disease that you're fighting, we were looking for something that would not uh, limit, us. limit us and there would be sort of this 
it will almost renew itself in, in each um, new period, yeah. um, cover period. So let's give, give my example. So I had a nodule on my thyroid that had to be cut off and um, went in for the surgery, had it done, yeah, excellent care I got. And then uh, three weeks after my surgery, I got a letter in the post saying, listen, you are no longer allowed to claim anything for thyroid. Whew. So that was quite a shock. That was our first experience with Mauritian Medical Aid. Um, so it's not bad, it works. Um, the claiming process could be faster, um, as it could be anywhere in the world. Um, but the price of medical in, in Mauritius is, a, is very affordable. So we found coming from South Africa, or being on Discovery Health, it was less than half. Um, and then we have clients that are elderly, like that won't get cover or have pre-existing conditions, and they come over to Mauritius on their Discovery plan, which is called Discovery Africa. So they got to, you've got to notify Discovery, and you can change onto your Discovery Africa plan. It's not marketed. Most brokers don't know about it, but it is true. So, I think, yes, yeah. so the combination of, I think, expat cover and local cover, uh, it works well for us. And yeah. perhaps that's an option that you may want to explore as well. So if you need more information on medical, drop us an email on info at rolfinternational.com. We can get our broker to reach out to you, give you quotes on medical cover. They also do insurance cover on public liability, business cover, motor vehicle cover. They cover our boat. Um, any kind of insurance that you need, they do do. Um, and they take all the risk out of you having to run around and try go to five different underwriters. They'll go give it, get you the quotes and they'll come back to you and say, we recommend this, this or this because of these reasons. Um, so they, they're the professionals. We're not the professionals. So we rely on them a lot. Yeah. Okay. So guys, yes, um, from Shane and Julia signing off. See you soon. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye.